They were going after the Trump campaign. They released the dirt on Paul Manafort and then went off bragging about it in the press. As I pointed out on the timeline, a Ukrainian court found both of them guilty, Leshenko and Sitnik, guilty of two things. One, interfering in the 2016 election and illegally interfering in Ukraine's foreign policy. Hysterically, this is exactly the same thing the left and the media are now accusing Trump and Rudy Giuliani of. In essence, maybe we can hide our crap by accusing others of doing the same thing. So how do they try to cover up their crimes? Well, check out every major fact check that touches on the guilty verdict handed out to Lushenko and Sitnik. Here's the little nugget like they found in the Washington Post. When mentioning the guilty verdict, the Post says this, quote, In July, the l- ruling was overturned by an appeals court. Whoa, wait a minute. We have the audio tape of them saying it. So that was a lie? They didn't interfere in the election? Well, that too is a major slam in our case, if that's so. Mm, We've learned our lesson. Let's look. How can these two guys go around bragging that they did it, then get convicted only to be considered innocent a few months later? Well, that's what the media would have you believe unless you do your own homework. The Post references this article as sourcing for that conclusion. And the title sounds pretty bad for our case. Oh, if you would rule the world on headlines, boy, it would be a different place. Appeals Court. Sitnik and MP Lushenko did not act illegally by disclosing that Manafort's name is in the Party of Regions Black Ledger, end quote. Oh my gosh, that sounds convincing if I'm just reading the headline. But the Ukrainian news site reporting, this reporting is from one source, Lushenko. So that headline is coming out of the mouth of the guy who was just convicted. And they never listed why the case was dismissed. Really weird. But there are other sources we could go to. See that one-sided report? didn't matter to the Washington Post. They were so convinced that they let Leshenko write an opinion piece basically dunking the entire theory that he tried to undermine Trump even though he's on tape saying it. And he specifically took direct aim at Rudy Giuliani. The entire article is is propaganda that would make Stalin blush. I'll spare you from reading the entire thing. You can read it, though. It'll be up on our website. But it's summed up by this one quote. Quote, In the summer of this year, we won the appeal, and the court's decision was completely annulled. That court concluded that there were charges against me that were unfounded and even obliged my opponents to reimburse me for $100 in legal costs. But Giuliani continues to quote this court decision, even though it never attained any legal force, end quote. Let me ask you this. Why wouldn't the media publish the reason why the case was dismissed? I mean, they'll use the statement of the accused as verifiable proof, but they won't report on the specifics of the court decision. Well, because the truth is inconvenient. You can't know the specifics because they still haven't been disputed. Did the Ukrainians conspire to affect Ukrainian foreign policy and influence U.S. elections? Yep. Yep, it's true. It's absolutely true. But, Glenn, you just told me the case was thrown out on appeal. Hmm. On a technicality, let's go to the Kyiv Post. And it's one of the only places that mentions the defense's case. Here's the defense. One that the person that made the charge had no right to follow the lawsuit because his interest had not been affected. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. That doesn't sound very innocent. Two, the administrative courts cannot consider lawsuit against Ukrainian members of parliament. And three, the statute of limitations had expired. (sighs) Well, we... O.J. Simpson, (laughs) I mean... He's innocent. They already found him innocent. And if you find new stuff or if he even admits it now, well, there's nothing you can do. Statute of limitations. He was out on the golf course. Okay. Excuse me? 
It's like saying that O.J. Simpson is innocent because we waited too long, at least the cop did, to read him the Miranda rights. Nothing in the original court conviction was even disputed. The facts remain. The procedural technicality is the only reason the case was dismissed. But that's not how the media is reporting it. No, no. You have to somehow or another make this go away. Now think about the buzzwords the media is using with these fact checks. The case was dismissed. The allegation was recanted. The investigation was dormant. Now let's go back to the five core principles of journalism. Are they telling the truth? Are they, are they being accurate or not? They're definitely not reporting from any kind of independent perspective. This is blatant propaganda specifically to benefit the left. In fairness, how many times does the media completely admit the, uh, omit the other side of the story? Are they doing harm? Oh, catastrophic harm, I think, to our republic. No one knows who to trust anymore. The only business mentioned in the Bill of Rights has now been deemed an enemy of millions of people. And I think it's true just looking at what I showed you tonight. When history looks back upon the spark that ignited the fire, they will find this mainstream media holding the match and the lighter fluid. So far, there has been zero accountability. I've made my case. The res media responded with theirs. Now I've completely dismantled it. Will they start reprinting retractions? Will they begin to report in good faith? This is their chance to try to repair the damage before things get really out of hand, but they will not do it. I want to take you back to where we began tonight. I want you just to look at this chalkboard. You have to ask yourself, your friends have to ask yourself, we are citizens of a country that is being pushed to the brink. They are trying to impeach a president that all people, just like African Americans with O.J. Simpson, they wanted him to be free for a different reason. We're talking about the impeachment of a president because people don't want him to be president anymore. Your impeachment is next November. Vote him out. We have to ask ourselves, is this in the national interest to find out if Russia tried to influence? Yes. We cannot have any country, even Canada, influence our elections. Was it important to find out if Trump colluded with Russia to hurt the DNC candidate? Yes. If he did that, he should be impeached. Well, we did that. Does the fact that the DNC benefited by a Russian investigation, does it mean we should not pursue the national interest? Of course not. We have to know the truth for the sanctity of our elections. Okay, so would Trump benefit from investigations on Ukraine and Burisma? Yeah. Well, he's doing it just because he was after Joe Biden. Was he going to benefit? Yeah. Any more than the DNC with the Russia and now impeachment investigations? No. Which is more in line with America's national interest? Somebody who says, hey, you better investigate these things. I got a whole list of things that my people tell me and your people tell me that haven't been investigated. We're not sending you another dime until you investigate those things. Does that sound like what a president should do when they've lost $7 billion, it looks like they were interfering with our election and they're doing a lot of shady stuff? Or is it better to have somebody use quid pro quo just like he did, but withhold a billion dollars of U.S. aid to get all those scandals to go away? Which ones is it? Which one's worse? I say we investigate all of it. I think we need to push on America.